In the next several videos, we'll be predicting products. What I mean by that is, um, if we have a set of reactants, you should be able to guess or predict what products may form. There's several types. Um, the first type of reaction we're going to look at are synthesis reactions. In the next several videos, we'll be predicting products. What I mean by that is, um, given some reactants, you should be able to guess or predict what products will be formed. Now, we'll be predicting products for several different types of reactions, but in this video, we're going to look specifically at synthesis reactions. Maybe this cartoon chemistry can help us out. So in a synthesis reaction, we'll be synthesizing something. In this case, um, we have guy A plus girl B come together um, to make a couple, couple C. So a synthesis reaction um, isn't always too difficult to recognize. Um, usually you have um, two things coming together to make one thing. Um, oftentimes, it's an element plus another element will come together to make a compound. So let's look at this example here. Sodium plus nitrogen. Now you could probably guess what products are going to be formed even without using this cheat sheet. But this cheat sheet will help you quite a bit. Now there's two types of synthesis reactions you'll be responsible for memorizing. First, a metal oxide, like calcium oxide for example, combines with water to make a metal hydroxide, like calcium hydroxide. Secondly, um, you'll have to know that elements may combine to form a compound. Now you know what elements are and you know what a compound is. So given example B and example D, what do you think this one is more similar to? Example B or example D? Well, this is the element sodium and the element nitrogen. So it looks like we have two elements combining to form a compound. So what compound do you think would be made if we mixed sodium and nitrogen? Well, really the only possibility, of course, is sodium nitride. So notice the first thing we do is we predict the product. The second thing we do is we have to write the formula. So the symbol for sodium is Na. Nitrogen is one of the diatomic molecules, so it's N2. Sodium has a charge of plus 1. And nitride has a charge of minus 3. So we write the formula Na3N. Now the final step will be to balance the equation. Notice we have two nitrogens on the left. So let's make two nitrogens on the right. This also made six sodiums on the right, so we need, of course, six sodiums on the left. This problem is complete, but recall the order in which we did it. The first thing we did is we predicted the products. The second thing was we wrote the formulas. And the third thing was we balanced the equation. All right, let's try one more problem, barium oxide plus water. Now, do you think barium oxide plus water most resembles example B or example D? Well, we have barium oxide. And barium is a metal, so we have a metal oxide. So, of course, we're dealing with example B. So, a metal oxide plus water is going to make a metal hydroxide. In this case, it made calcium hydroxide. But of course, we're not going to make calcium hydroxide over here because the metal we're dealing with is barium. So what metal, sorry, what metal hydroxide do you think will be formed from barium? Of course, it's barium hydroxide. So now, let's write the formula. Using your periodic table, you'll notice that barium has a charge of plus 2 and oxide is minus 2. So the formula is BAO. Water is, of course, H2O. And once again, barium is plus 2. Hydroxide is minus 1. So the formula should be written like this. And the last step, we have to balance 
the equation. And if you notice, the equation is already balanced. So this video has given you an introduction to synthesis reactions. And once again, there are two kinds you'll be responsible for. Metal oxide and elements combining to form a compound.